morning students the today's topic is transmission impairments and multiplexing so let's uh, start with the first topic that is transmission impairments uh, before uh, going to discussion this topic so what is the meaning of transmission impairments the first word is transmission transmission means whenever we send our data the data is in transmission form when uh, either it is received by the receiver and the impairment impairments means when we lost something or in the case of transmission impairments we sends the data and the data is sent in the form of signals it means transmission impairment means whenever there is a loss of signals so uh, in the communication system analog signals travel through the transmission media which tends to deteriorate the quality of the analog signals which means that the signals at the beginning of the medium is not same as the signals at the end of the medium the imperfection causes signal impairments so what do you mean by the transmission impairment means uh, whenever suppose i am a sender and you are the receiver whenever i send some data towards you the form of the data or the data that is at the sender side form is not same whenever you received the data so what it means some uh, some type of loss of data is there some loss of data is always there so this loss of data is called the transmission impairments so uh, in the uh, case of impairment causes what is what are the main reasons of impairment causes or you can say what are the main uh, problems that occur when we transmit the data so there are the three impairment causes are there the first is attenuation and the second is distortion and the third is noise let's start discussing uh, one by one okay let's start with the first one that is called the attenuation it means loss of energy the strength of the signal decreases with increasing distance which causes loss of energy in overcoming a resistance of medium this is also known as attenuated signals amplifiers are used to amplify the attenuated signals which give the original signal back and compensate for this loss so let's start with the first one the first is attenuation what is the meaning of attenuation attenuation means the loss of energy the loss of energy means the loss of signals whenever uh, you send the signals and some loss of energy is there or some signals are lost these signals are also known as attenuated signals so we can use the amplifiers to boost these signals and again reached at the receiver side in at in the same form as the form that is present at the sender's side or you can say we can use the amplifier for the attenuated signals to comes back in the original signal form and compensate for the for this loss so look at the diagram look at your screens the first is this this is the original signal the original signal is this whenever you send the signal and the signal whenever it is in a transmission mode look at there the shape of the signal is changed so what it means this there are some loss of energy is there some signals are lost so what we require to uh, come back these signals into the original form we required an amplifier now the in the third one the amplified now these are the amplified signals which can boost these particular signals and they came back into the original form so what it means now look at here at the point one when you start the transmission it is a transmission media whenever the original signals are there now compare this point one we have the original signals at the point two we have the attenuated signals and we know what is attenuated signals whenever some loss of signals are there the normal signals becomes the attenuated signals now we require now look at here we have a amplifier this is called a amplifier whenever we place the amplifier over there it can boost these signals and look at the point 3 again the signal becomes very uh, in the previous shape or you can say it can compensate all the loss so what it means amplifier is used for the attenuated signals and what do you mean by the attenuated signals whenever there is loss of energy or you can say 
whenever there is a loss of signals then we required a amplifier to boost our signals and that signals can gives the original signals back and compensate for the loss so this is all about the attenuation now move further the second the second the name is look at here the name is distortion it means the changes in the form or the shape of the signals whenever a form or a shape of a signal is changes it is called distortion this is generally seen in a composite signal made up with the different frequencies uh, this is normally happened in a composite signal and what do you mean by the composite signal whenever we are going to collaborate more than one signal or you can say whenever we combine more than one signal that combined signal is known as composite signals and these are of the different frequencies because every signal has their different frequency or whenever we collaborate or combine the two different signals there are the there are might be a chances of distortion is there so uh, the each frequency component has its own propagation speed traveling through a medium so the uh, every frequency component a component who has a frequency the frequency is different from the other components frequency so you can say every signal has their own propagation speed and the, uh, through which they are traveling through a medium so and that's why it uh, delay in arriving at the final destination every component arrive at the different time which leads to the distortion so what it means uh, in a simple language we can say a, a distortion is come into the play when, whenever we are going to make a composite signal composite means whenever we are going to make a combination of more than one signal suppose you are going to combine the two signals two uh, different signals they have the different frequencies they have the different propagation speed so if the different frequencies are different and the propagation speed is different so it might be happened that out of this composite signal signal one they can reach before to the signal two so whenever the signals they have the different propagation speed so that leads to a distortion because some of the signals they are received before the rest of the signals therefore they have the different phases at the receiver end from what they had at the sender's end so the signals that are received at the receiver side they have the different phases or you can say the diagram or the phase or the shape of that particular signal is different at the receiver side that is uh, different from the that is available at the sender's side so this is all about the distortion uh, now look at the diagram it is a composite signal sent and we all know what do you mean by the composite composite means the combination of more than one now this is a composite signal now components components means now we are going to combine these three signals into a single signal this is a signal number 1 signal 2 and now the signal 3 and they have the different phases phases means you can say they have the different forms or they have the different shapes now we are going to combine these three uh, signals and the next uh, the new signals that becomes a composite signal this is at the sender side or whenever uh, at the receiver look at the second diagram at the receiver end the three signals are there they have the different frequencies they have the different shapes they have the different forms or you can say they have the different propagation speed different propagation traveling speed through a medium so this signal now compare the signal look at your screens this signal the shape of this signal at the receiver end is completely different of the shape of this signal at the sender's end now look at the sender's end the composite signal sent look at the signal that is sent at the sender's end it is completely different what is the receiver receives that signal so what it means the shape or you can say the form of the signal is changed whenever this can be happened this is known as the distortion clear so this is all about the distortion now the last or the third one is the third problem is the noise the random or unwanted signals that mixes up with the original signal is called noise whenever suppose you send some data the data can be sent in the form of signals some outer signals 
some outer signals when they are going to be add up with your signal this is called a noise whenever a outer signals are combined with our original signals and this is called a noise there are several types of noise such as induced noise cross talk noise thermal noise and impulse noise which may be corrupt the signals now we have the different categories of the noises we have the four different categories like the first is induced then thermal then cross talk and then impulse these are the different types of noises when these noises can mix up with our original signal so automatically our signal contains some type of noises there now induced noise comes from the sources such as motors and appliances ah the noise that comes from some devices now suppose there is a motor that is in working and they can produce some type of noise this these type of noises are known as induced noises or you can say the induced noise is known as the noise generated by some appliances appliances means some devices or some motors these devices act as sending antenna and transmission medium act as receiving antenna now they have the uh, both the antennas they are present at the sender side as well as the receiver side through which they can send the noise so this is all about the induced noise now the second is thermal noise thermal noise is the movement of electrons in wire which creates an extra signals what do you mean by thermal noise whenever we all know the electrons they are moving within the wire whenever the signals are traveling so the unwanted or you can say the movement of the electrons suppose at some time they are moving very fast at some time they are moving very slow whenever they are moving very fast they produce some extra signals or they are create some extra signals so these signals can produce some type of noise and this noise is known as thermal noise third the cross talk cross talk noise is when one wire affects the other creates an extra uh, other wire what it means cross talk means whenever a two different wires they are linked with each other or one wire they can affect the signals of the second wire so it is called cross talk the fourth is impulse impulse noise is a signal with high energy that comes from lightning or power lines now the last one is impulse uh, what is impulse noise this impulse this uh, noise is comes uh, with a very high energy that comes from the lightning or the power lines power lines mean with the help of electricity the noise that produced uh, from the electricity and this is known as the impulse noise so uh, look at the diagram this is a point one where the transmitted signal is there now the, this is a transmission media the wire shows the transmission media now the noise is present if the noise is there look at there the shape the size everything is changed of the your transmitted signal the signal becomes a different because some extra noise they collaborate or they add with your particular signal and the shape or of the this, this particular signal changes now look at the receiver side they can receive a very very different uh, signal or the signal that is received at the receiver side the shape of this particular signal is completely changed so this is all about the transmission impairments the next topic is multiplexing now what is multiplexing multiplexing is a technique used to combine and send the multiple data streams over a single medium the process of combining the data streams is known as multiplexing and hardware used for multiplexing is known as multiplexer so what it means what is multiplexing multiplexing is a technique used to combine the multiple signals whenever we have a single transmission media for send over signals and we have the number of users who wants to send the data then we use the technique and that technique is known as multiplexing so what it means basically it is a process of uh, combining the multiple uh, signals and this technique is known as the multiplexing and the hardware that is uh, used for this multiplexing is known as 
multiplexer. Now look at the diagram. Look at here. N input lines. What it means? N means any number. Means more than one users who wants to send the data, or you can say number. Uh, the number of sending <coughs> data streams are more than one. But we have the single transmission media. So what? What will happen? We are using the multiplexer MUX. MUX denotes for the multiplexer, and DEMUX denotes the demultiplexer. Now look at here. The device is there. The hardware device is there. The MUX is written on this particular device, and this device is known as multiplexer. With the help of multiplexer, we are going to process the technique of multiplexing. And we all know what is multiplexing. Whenever we have the more than one signal to send at the same time, we can combine these signals, and these te this technique is known as multiplexing. Now look at here. We have the n number of input lines. We are going to combine these lines with the help of multiplexer and send this. Now look at here. One link. Link means transmission media channel. One link n channels. What it means? One link is there. The one dedicated link is between the this end and this end but we have the n channels channel means or you can see the n input lines or you can say n users who wants to send data they can combine the data they can send the data the data is received at the receiver side now look at here at the blue color the demux or demultiplexer is placed at the receiver side and the working of the demultiplexer is completely opposite of the multiplexer so what is the working of multiplexer combine the different signals and make them a single line and what what can be happen in the case of demultiplexer it receives a single signals and separated into the n in n output lines this can be happen look at here the single link one link and n number of channels so one link the one data stream is received at the demux demux can split one two so on to the n and what is right over here n output lines so what it means now we are uh, going go through with uh, example suppose we have the five input lines we have the five different signals we can combine these five signals into a single link with the help of multiplexer and sends towards to the receiver side the receiver receives that data and we have they have the demultiplexer at the receiver side so what will happen they can split all the signals into a different output lines and how many output lines the five output lines because at the sender side the five different input lines can be merged and sent and at the receiver side five different output lines can a uh, single uh, the receiver output line is received and they can split it into the five different output lines so this is called the multiplexing or you can say uh, this is called the multiplexing technique and in multiplexing we are using the hardware device that is called multiplexer if we are using the multiplexer then we are also uses the demultiplexer clear now the next is the types of multiplexing now we have the three type of multiplexing is over there the first one is frequency division multiplexing or you can say fdm second is time division multiplexing you can say tdm and the last one is wavelength division multiplexing that is called wdm these are the three different types of multiplexing is there the first type is frequency division multiplexing or you can say fdm fdm is an analog technology uh, this thing has to be remember analog technology means it can deal with the analog signals fdm is an analog technology and fdm divides the spectrum or the carrier bandwidth in a logical channels and allocates one user to each channel each user can use the channel frequency independently and has exclusive access of it all channels are divided in such a way that they do not overlap with each other channels are separated by the guard bands and guard band is a frequency which is not used by either channel so this can be happen in the case of frequency division multiplexing now what is frequency division multiplexing the first thing is it is a analog technology it means it can deal with the analog signals or whenever a frequency word is there so the uh, bandwidth is also there so what will be happen over there 
every uh, suppose we have the multiple channels who wants to send their data but what will be happen in the case of frequency division multiplexing the bandwidth the carrier carrier means the channel the channel bandwidth is divided into a different bandwidths and particular bandwidth is allocated to everyone suppose we have the five users who want to send the data and the bandwidth is same we can divide the bandwidth into the five different categories and allocate particular bandwidth to every user now the every user have their has their own bandwidth access they can independently they can use the channel frequency independently and has the exclusive access of it and all the channels are divided in such a way so they do not overlap with each other why they are do not overlap with each other because we have some extra frequencies are there and these extra frequency is known as the guard band guard band means first we allocate the frequency to the user number one then a free frequency is there then the frequency of the second user then again free frequency then third then free then fourth then free frequency then fifth user and these frequency free frequencies are no, known as guard band guard band basically is a frequency which is not used by any channel and the working of this uh, guard band is to prevent the overlapping between the different frequencies now uh, look at the diagram now look at here we have the frequencies over there so they can define the frequency one channel one channel two channel three they have the frequency one frequency two frequency three in this example we have the three different channels who wants to send the data look at here the multiplexer is placed at the center side Whenever a signals or the uh, these signals are collaborative at the multiplexer, they become a single signal. Now it has become a signal. Now look at here. It has become a signal, signal, signal. But one thing has to be remembered. Look at here. Frequency three is there. Ah, this is the free free space. Now look at your screens. This is a free space. Now frequency two is there. This is a free space. Free frequency and the frequency that is not used by any of the channel. that is called guard band if the free, free frequency is not there they can mix the frequencies of the channels they are mixed with each other if they are mixed with each other the frequencies are overlapping with each other so this is the single signal they can traveled at the receiver side now whenever it receives at the receiver side the multiplexer is there the d multiplexer is inserted at the receiver side so what will happen now look at here they can receive the signals but they can split the this composite signal into the three different channels now look at here channel number 1 is there now the channel number 2 and the channel number 3 so this is all about the frequency division multiplexing okay uh, the second type is tdm or you can say the time division multiplexing uh, tdm is applied primarily on the uh, digital signals but can be applied on analog signals as well so uh, this is the first difference between the frequency division multiplexing and time division multiplexing in the case of tdm they primarily primarily means they basically work with the digital signals but if the signals are analog they can also applied on that particular analog signals what it means it can work on both the signals either they are the analog or they are the digital one in the time division multiplexing the shared channel is divided among its users by means of time slots what it means now the channel is divided in between the users according to the time slots we are making a time slots now one by one the time slot is given to the different users so they can easily access their time slot and send their data so uh, the each user can transmit data within the provided time slots only digital signals are divided into the frames equivalent to the time slots that is the frame of an optimal size which can be transmitted if in a given time slot so what it means the time slots are made in the case of time division multiplexing and suppose we have the three user we are making the three time slots time slot 1 time slot 2 time slot 3 whenever a particular time slot is arrived for for a user only on that particular time slot the particular users can send their data now the time slot shifted to the next user then go for the next user and so on this can be happen in the case of time division multiplexing tdm works in the synchronized mode synchronized means 
they are completely linked with each other both ends that is multiplexer and demultiplexer are timely synchronized and both switch to next channel simultaneously so what is the meaning of synchronization basically tdm works in synchronized mode why the synchronized mode because we have the time slots we have the limited time slots for a users who wants to send the data and also we have the same time slots at the receiver side whenever a data is received at the receiver side so uh, this is the diagram now first we discuss the diagram then you come to know about the time division multiplexing now the channel a is there or you can say the system 1 now the system 2 system 3 system 1 they has the suppose orange data slots system 2 they have the green data slots and system 3 they have the blue data slots why the color of all the three uh, data slots are different because they are the time slots whenever a orange time slot is there system 1 sends the data whenever a green time slot is there system 2 is ready to send the data whenever a blue slot is there system 3 sends the data now look at the transmission data this is called the transmission data now look at first the first is orange then green then blue then orange then green then blue then orange then green then blue what it means they all the user they have to send the data but the data is sent in particular order first the time slot given to the system number 1 so system number 1 they have the orange data they sends their data now the time slot given to the system number 2 they have the green data is there they sends the green data slots now the time slot is shifted to the system number 3 and in the case of system number 3 they have the blue data and the data that is in the transmitted mode they are in the same pattern first orange then green then blue orange then green then blue so what will be happen they have the different time slots and one by one the time slot is given to each and every user so they have the three different users with the help of multiplexer we can combine the uh, data slots of three users and make a single link is there look at here the transmitted data whenever this data is received at the receiver side the demultiplexer is there whenever you have a demultiplexer they can split out the data so split out means they have first they pick the orange data slots given to the system number 1 then they pick the green data slots they are given to the system number 2 then the blue data slots given to the system number 3 so th uh, this is the method how the work is done in the tdm or you can say the time division multiplexing now uh, suppose a uh, win channel a transmit its frame at one end the demultiplexer provide media to the channel a on the other end as soon as the channel a time slot expires this side switches to the channel b on the other end the demultiplexer works in a synchronized manner and provides media to the channel b signals from different channels travel with the path in interleaved manner what will happen now look at the diagram it says whenever a channel a wants to send the data they have the time slot and they sends their data whenever a channel a sends the data whenever this data is received at the receiver side demultiplexer can split or divide the data and fix the data for the channel number 1 that is shown in the orange form and given to the system number 1 so that's why it is called a synchronized manner the number of time slots they are shifted they are uh, firstly given to the system number 1 then system number 2 then system number 3 same can be happened at the receiver side so this is all about the uh, time division multiplexing now we have the last one that is called the wavelength division multiplexing uh light has different wavelengths or you can say the colors and whenever a wavelength is there you can also say the wavelength is directly connected with the light signals so the signals they come into the form of light so that the uh, light has the different wavelengths the wavelength can be categorized by the different colors uh, in the fiber optic mode multiple optical carrier signals are multiplexed into a optical fiber by using a different wavelengths so what will happen in the fiber optics we have the number of signals or you can say we have the number of wavelengths are there we can combine these wavelengths and make a single wavelength 
by the combination of different wavelengths in the form of optical fiber and that combined combination can be made with the help of multiplexer so uh, this is an analog multiplexing technique and one thing is clear if the signals are light signals or you are using the light signals for sending the data so automatically you can deal with the analog signals so this technique is also works with the analog multiplexing technique and is done conceptually in the same manner as fdm frequency division multiplexing but uses lighted signals now the working of the wavelength division multiplexing is similar to the frequency division division multiplexing only the difference is in the case of frequency division multiplexing we deal with the frequencies but in the case of wavelength division multiplexing we deal with the light as a signal only this is the difference so this is uh, all about the wavelength division multiplexing now uh, diagram is there now look at look at the diagram these are the wavelengths and these wavelengths can be categorized by the different colors now we have 1 2 3 4 now look at here we have the four different wavelengths at the sender side they are categorized by the different colors what we have a multiplexer at the sender side what is the working of the multiplexer to combine all the wavelengths they can combine all the wavelength into a single signal now look at here transmitted data all the wavelengths are overlapping with each other what so what it means they all combine with each other and make a single signal and they can send towards to the sender side whenever it receives on the sender side the demultiplexer is there so what is the working of demultiplexer we all know the working of demultiplexer is completely opposite with the working of multiplexer so what will happen at the receiver side they can split all the different wavelengths all the different colorful wavelengths into a different signals now look at here 1 2 3 4 the four signals or the four different wavelengths they can be received by the receiver side and at the sender side we also have the four different uh, wavelengths and these wavelengths can be categorized by the different colors so this is all about the wavelength division multiplexing